Link, we're speaking with author Jeremy Westerman, discussing his book, Pre-Apocalypse One, Serpent's Agenda. It follows Delta Force leader son Gage Moreland as he is recruited by a military academy's secret side to battle reptilians who have been humanity's nemesis for eons, while also exploring the exposure of the serpent's control over humanity through secret societies and CERN's plans to resurrect their former god. We thank Authors Tranquility Press for helping us put Jeremy in the spotlight today. Ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. And we are just delighted to have Jeremy on our show at this hour. Jeremy, thanks for being our guest. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. This is quite a book. It's epic in its scope. It's very imaginative. It's sci-fi at its best. How the heck did you come up with this? Did it come to you in a dream? Tell me a little bit about <laughs> your inspiration. You bet. So I have, for the past 10 years or so, I have been listening to Coast to Coast AM, hmm. which is a basically uh, every conspiracy theory type thing you could, you've ever heard of, basically in there. And so I, I loved all the different things that were on there. And I've always wanted to write a book. And so I, I basically put that together with some other conspiracy theorist type programs that I've listened to uh, and, and, and basically put, put them all together into uh, a, 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 a book that, that focuses. So, so each chapter is... Uh, one is about the story, and then the second chapter is about conspiracy theories. Mm. And so it blends the two well. And so I hope to write a book that would that could be considered both fiction but also nonfiction. Because my goal throughout my life has been to write one of each book. And so I I I thought doing this would satisfy that goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coast to coast radio. I used to work for NBC News Radio and occasionally I'd have to work the graveyard shift overnight. And that's really the only thing on. And you mm -hmm. listen to it and you're in like a lonely studio and they're talking about aliens and monsters. And like you said, every conspiracy theory in the world at four o'clock in the morning, you start looking at it like this, like, hey, Maybe they're right. Maybe that's why people are so weird today, right? Very true. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So that's quite a cool backstory on your book. That that's what helped inspire it. Tell us a little bit about the character you created, Gage Moreland. Who do you if this were to be a movie, who would Gage sure. be? So it would be a young version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. Because he is built just like him. Right. He's six foot two, but he's only 17 years old. So he's going to be kind of hard to cast. Right. But he, he, he's built like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's, he's, he's a lot stronger, though, than Arnold Schwarzenegger. And so he's it, – here's, here's kind of his backstory. So he uh, is basically a test tube baby. Hmm. His father uh, is in the Delta Force, and he's he's the leader over them at Fort Bragg in in North Carolina, and so he, uh, basically with his career, he got in some 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 trouble, and the book doesn't go into that, but he he had to compromise, and so he had to have Gage created. And Gage is the fusion of his mother's and his father's DNA, but it's the best of both of them. And so he's still quite human. There's no, you know, nothing outlandish in him. It's just the best of both of them created in him. And so, yeah, there's no, you know, genetic apocalypse with him at all. It's, it's purely, purely it's it's not quite natural, but it is him, you know, being both a, from his mother and father. Gotcha. And so, he's kind of like this 
not a superhero, but kind of like a superhuman, the best exactly of both distilled into this six foot two built guy who can kick some butt, some reptilian. Exactly. Butt. Exactly. Yep. Now I yep. love the fact that the enemy are reptiles because mm -hmm. they're just creepy. I mean, maybe some people keep them as pets. I don't know. The little ones we have here in Florida are like little geckos. They're fine. But if it gets bigger than that, I want no part of it. So uh, tell us a little bit about these reptilians that are fighting the uh, American forces. Sure. And so there's 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 conspiracy theories about reptilians being on the earth, both a native inhabitant of the earth that have developed here naturally, but even more important than that, from the Drago system, uh, and these are the these are the evil ones that have come to Earth uh, to to basically conquer any any uh, any species that they come in contact with, mm -hmm. and so they're they're kind of like the Borg in Star Trek. They just they are looking to take over everything everywhere. Now, there's a lot more powerful aliens out there that can easily defeat the reptilians, and they have, and they and they do quite quite well. But they they are letting humanity kind of go at its own, you know, kind of stand up for itself. And so, yeah, and, and so basically, in, in some of the training that Gage gets when he goes to the Air Force Academy's secret side where they they deal in space exploration and things so it's it's kind of like the secret space program in the Air Force Academy mm -hmm. and so Gage goes there and gets a lot more training they have some hologram systems a lot like in Star Trek where they do a lot of training and there's there's a test that they have to overcome and that's basically in defeating several reptilians and a lot of other species as well that that are that are harmful to mankind like the 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 grays and and things like that and so gage he he goes through this test with two of his two of his buddies that he he's 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 assigned to to go through this with and they go through and fight these reptilians, and Gage basically just masters it. He gets a, a perfect score on it. And part of it is because of the weapon that he uses. He uses a tomahawk, mm. which is just like uh, just like uh, in the, pa the Patriot movie with Mel Gibson, right. where he, he attacks several British soldiers with a tomahawk. Well, it's the same kind of thing with my character, Gage Moreland. He goes through and, and, and just masters this program. And so th that, that alerts the overseers of Earth, these, the, the, the head reptilian over the Earth. His name is Gren Mulf Mokhtare. But he 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 sees, oh boy, we got to conquer this guy quickly while he's young before he can get too too tough and be able to defeat me. And so that is basically the 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 the, the cover of the book mm -hmm. where he's he's fighting this 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 character, the grin. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah, I love the uh, tomahawk aspect of it because I like, you know, this is sci-fi. You could have invented any weapon that was laser or whatever. But the hand-to-hand -hand combat of Gage versus the reptilians makes it kind of like an epic battle. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I've always loved that that battle scene in in The Patriot. And so I wanted to include that. Now, I also, so, so there's a, a couple of other aspects to the book as well. And so, like, I, I love Anatolian Shepherds. They are my favorite dog. Mm -hmm. And they, they frequently guard against lions. They attack lions. And um, they, they guard sheep and other animals 
from lions. And so I thought, what better, what better type of animal to have to, to be able to fight reptilians as well as, as one of these Anatolian shepherds? And so they're in the book as well. Awesome. Awesome. You kind of were able to cherry pick all of your favorite elements. And that's the fun of writing, creating this different world. And it's funny you mentioned these dogs that used to fight um, lions, because I was always interested in Mastiff for the same reason. In the uh, at the castles, apparently, they used to chain the Mastiffs nose to nose, and they were mm. able to defeat even lions, so they said. So they're big enough, so maybe it's possible. Yeah. But you've Very created good. such a great world. Was it fun living in that world while you were writing it? Oh, it was very fun. Yeah, I, I had a blast doing it. Yeah. And just coming up with all the different theories and things, it, it was it was a heck of a lot of fun. You bet. Are there going to be more installments in this book? Is this the beginning of a series? Yes. I'm I'm working on the second book right now, and I have slight outlines for the rest of them as well. But I'd like to do eventually get nine books fully written and so so eat so the second book takes place in gage's second year of the air force academy and so yeah and 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 it actually i found ways to make it even better than the first one with the action and things mm -hmm. so i'm 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 hoping to to make that even better than the than the first one awesome can't wait to to, to read that one Let's talk a little bit about your sci-fi influences. You talked a little bit about Star Trek, Star Wars, mm -hmm. Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica. Exactly. The Charlton Heston yeah. movies. Tell yeah. me what's inside Jeremy's brain when he's putting this stuff together. Is it a 17-year-old uh, Charlton Heston, perhaps, swinging that hatchet at times? Uh, sure, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I... I just I've had all kinds of influences. I've 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 watched a ton of the Star Trek shows. Um, I, I actually got the Paramount subscription so that I could go through and be able to watch all of them. I just watched Picard, which is my favorite series by far of the Star Trek. They've done yeah. an out a, a, just an outlandish job with that with that show, and and so. I, I, and right now, I just started a couple of days ago. Uh, I think it's called Brave New World. Hmm. But yeah, so so there's there's quite a bit out there uh, for the Star Trek fan or or people that like that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so I like that a lot. I like the Star Wars quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so there's there's quite a bit that uh, has influenced me for sure. Now, we're talking about conspiracy theories and coast-to-coast -coast mm -hmm. radio and the fact that people talk about reptilians on Earth. Uh, do you believe there are reptilians on Earth? You know, I I, I actually do, but I, I, I don't know exactly what, because there's, there's claims that you can actually see them and be able to, to tell that they're there. Mm -hmm. And... I, I I haven't been able to do that, but I, I would I would like to, uh, and so so yeah, that's that's kind of part of part of what I'd like to do. What about aliens? Do you think they're among us? Yes, I do. Uh, there, so there's there's quite a bit of evidence that there are aliens among us. There are countless UFO sightings. Now they say that ninety percent of them are things that, that 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 governments have created mm -hmm. and are using and flying around in a top secret fashion but they say the other 10 percent they can't explain that are actually ufos from distant galaxies or other dimensions and so because a lot of them you know they kind of vanish and things and so they think that they they potentially are switching dimensions Mm. so yeah uh and and dimensions get a lot into my book as well right. because i i i basically um i i i i talk about the other dimensions i have a whole theory on the dimensions and 
uh, dark matter and things and how the 96% of dark matter and energy are basically uh, other dimensions. And so, and, and, and there's a whole theory in my book that takes up two whole chapters on everything from the, the, the true location of the temple in Egypt, or I'm sorry, in, in Jerusalem that was there, uh, being in the city of David, uh, to giants being on the earth and, uh, and, and being here currently. Uh, and, and there was a, a case where giants um, were found and, and, and eliminated by the, the U.S. Special Forces. Hmm. They, they found one in Kandahar, Afghanistan uh, back in the, in the two, early 2000s. And they, they fought him there. And they, they, they say they lost seven Special Forces troops to this giant before they were able to take him down. And then they, they took him to a, an air force base uh, and, 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 and put his body there. And so there's a lot of, a lot of evidence for giants and things. And the, the, the Smithsonian is famous for hiding all of the details that go along with giants, but there is overwhelming evidence throughout the world of giants. Well, I'm six six. So You're right. Okay. Do, do I qualify? Well, so so these giants are generally anywhere from seven to generally twelve feet, but even higher. Wow. So like they they say that that Nimrod, the 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 leader over uh they say they found his his tomb in at in uh in in uh Iraq. Mm -hmm. And the, the soldiers actually took over his body when they when they when they when they went into Af into Iraq. It was one of the first things that they did was take his body. Hmm. And uh, so 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 they they have a lot of uh, and Nimrod is the one that supposedly that, that a lot of these secret organizations and things want to resurrect. And and that's basically set up for book two, it, his resurrection, and so there's there's a lot of details there too. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, so so there's all kinds of crazy things in the world that I've I've tried to implement into my books. What do you hope the takeaway for readers are after they read your book? Sure. Well, so I. I just a, a love for science fiction, a love for conspiracy theories, uh, a, a love for new imaginative stories mm -hmm. that, you know, there, there, there's nothing quite like my book out there in any form. And so I just I wanted to create something totally unique and uh, make it just a. Uh, a, a, a book that anybody could pick up and read anybody that loves action sci-fi uh conspiracy theories would would love my book absolutely i agree it's very imaginative and yet it still borrows from a lot of genres that makes it interesting because it has a familiar feel to it and i'm a huge fan of science fiction i mean planet of the apes i think i watch it about twice a year just because okay. I love it and all the Star Treks. Captain Kirk and William Shatner was my favorite, but I'm probably older mm -hmm. than you and I enjoyed that series back in the 60s. I don't know. But Picard is also an awesome series. This is quite a great world you have developed. And a lot of it has to do with these secret societies. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit or tell the folks at home a little bit about the serpents control over humanity, utilizing these secret societies. Sure. So the, 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 the biggest one that affects most people is the federal reserve. Mm. And it is, it was basically put over, over Americans, but also there's, there's one basically over virtually every country out there. There's only seven countries that don't have the, 
a, a, a national bank like the Federal Reserve. Right. And so they uh, they basically control everything having to do with the economy. And like Alan Greenspan claimed that that they created the the uh, in 1929, the crash of the stock market, right. the, the Great Depression. And so that uh, he he's quoted in he, he's quoted saying that. And so it, it 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 makes you think, OK, how much power do these guys really have? Right. What can they control? How much power over me did they have? And so so and th- there's quite a few other things where these these entities control things as well. So so one thing in US courts they have uh in in on the flag in the court it's it's an admiralty flag mm-hmm. and we we are supposedly tried under admiralty law. And so this is different than the constitution. It's 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 a much different law and it, it there, there's a whole bunch that connects into this, but the the, the flag of in in the courts has a, has a gold rimmed edge to it, um, and this this signifies that we are under admiralty law anytime we go into a courthouse, hmm. and just like with our birth certificates, everything is in capital letters. And, and and even on gravestones, everything is in capital letters. And there's a reason for that. We're basically set up as a corporation. And that, that means we can be controlled financially. And so th- th- there's a lot that, that goes into that. Th- there's, there's quite a bit more to it. And, and, and I'm not adept at all of the details uh but but it's there's quite a bit out there on that those topics well a couple couple of things alan greenspan looks like he's reptilian (laughs) amen (laughs) so i think he might be a reptile the other thing is there's no doubt that the federal reserve bank controls our lives i mean they raise interest rates which affects our homes our living, the value of our money. I mean, look now in this country, after raising at a very precipitous rate, the interest rates, you have banks collapsing all over America. Exactly. You're right. There is somebody pulling the strings. It's certainly not that guy in the White House. I mean, right. Come on. He's a puppet. I mean, he couldn't run the CBS in my neighborhood, right? Yep, exactly. So how's he running the country? He's not. He's reading a teleprompter and reading cue exactly. cards. And not doing a great yeah. job at that, right? Right, exactly. So I think that it's very, very cool that you've uh, created this world that's very, very different than our own. But then again, how different is it really, right? Exactly, exactly. Because that and, guy in the White House much of looks it... like he's reptilian also. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and, but how much of it is 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 fact or fiction too? That's the real question. And and I think if we each kind of you know look at the different details in the book, and then you know kind of kind of start to sp- look at things a little closer, we might be able to find out even more details. Absolutely, absolutely. I think if people reflect a little bit about how they are controlled, what's controlling them, open their mind to possibilities. I mean, certainly, you know, we talked about aliens. Do I know if there's aliens Mm -hmm. out there? I don't. But Mm -hmm. does it make sense? There are? Yeah, it does. Because, you know, you've got billions of planets around us. Why would I think only ours is inhabited? There has to be other creatures. And then if others are inhabited and we can get to different planets, what makes me not think that they might be 10 times as advanced as we are? That exactly. they have ships that'll get them here in light seconds as opposed to light years. You know what I mean? Very or true. Or may be able to completely teleport. I mean, everything seems like it's born out of science fiction, right? I mean, mm-hmm. ev- almost, you know, if you look at Star Trek, a lot of it's prophecy, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. 
if you look at Minority Report, I mean, that's another classic uh -huh. sci-fi movie with the interactive computers and facial recognition. We have that going on today, right? Very true. Yep. Exactly. Here. It is a great book. It is a great read. It is written by a very, very talented writer. His name is Jeremy Westerman. He has spent a lot of time thinking about this world and has created an entirely different world. He has put it all in a book that will become a series, which will hopefully become a TV series and a movie as well. It is called Pre-Apocalypse One, Serpent's Agenda. It follows the story of a Delta Force leader's son by the name of Gage Moreland, who is a superstar hero, one of the best. He's like a young Captain Kirk, although his muscles are bigger and he wields a hatchet. This is a book you don't want to miss. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us here on Spotlight. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much.